if you've watched any Reds franchise this year, you know a couple things, right? You know, Kevin Newman sucks. You know, Jose Barrero really sucks. And you know that Spencer Steer looks like a freak. Not in real life, perfectly fine looking young man. However, in game, SDS made him look like Freddy Krueger and a fish had an anamorph baby. It was ridiculous. So I've actually fixed that. All that to say, I fixed it. I spent time in the editor. I did also boost his attributes to kind of what his Diamond Dynasty card is. Not all the way, um, but I, I gave him a little bit of a boost. He's going to be getting Rookie of the Year votes. I kind of want him to play a bigger role in the franchise. So if you don't like it, that's tough. I did take the fielding down to where it is as well. But this looks closer to how his Diamond Dynasty card looks, which is a 78 overall in Diamond Dynasty. And it's just the rating scale is different for franchise. It's an 81 in franchise. But hopefully he'll play a little bit of a bigger role for us. Again, they're not as high as they are in Diamond Dynasty on his live series card. But they are closer. Um, just wanted him to get a little bit of a boost since he's raking in real life. Super fun player. And this is as close as I can make him look to what he looks like in real life. It's not perfect. And I didn't want to tweak too many things. But it looks like a human it looks like he resembles like he could have a human mother and father instead of whatever ridiculously horrific amalgamation it was prior but he should be a beast for us and uh yeah i recognize that i had my face cam covering the scoreboard for the first three or four innings of the last game it did end up getting fixed of course and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with where the team is. I know we're one and two to start the year. It's early. It's a long season. MLB is a marathon and not a sprint. We are currently the sixth highest ranked team in baseball. Ninth for contact, third power, seventh for pitching, seventh for speed. Defense is a problem and I do want to get better defensively. You guys don't like Jonathan India is what I've learned, which surprises me. I thought he was kind of a fan favorite in real life. And I didn't, I'm not boosting his contact or anything. I think in the current updates and iteration of MLB The Show 23, he has like 90 contact, right? I'm just not going to do that for Jonathan India. I think Spencer Steer, it, 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 I can get away with changing because he's a rookie. They didn't know how to properly rate him because they didn't know what he would do. Jonathan India, we've seen for a few years now. So I don't really feel like it's fair to boost his numbers the same way I did with Spencer Steer or Matt McClain or tweaking Ellie De La Cruz, for example. But you guys don't like Jonathan India. Want him to get traded. And I can see why. We have Edwin Arroyo potentially coming up. Yandy Diaz is here. But you guys want to see Christian Encarnacion Strand, who is stranded in the minors in real life at AAA. We have a generational type player in Joaquin Arnold who we debuted at spring training, is going to start the year at AA. And he hit really well in spring training. Then you go over to shortstop. We know about Spencer Steer. Noel V. Marte, currently called up to AAA in real life, playing very well for us here in the game in just 11 ABs, but had a decent year last year as well. Uh, I don't think we can see it, unfortunately. But was good last year, did actually debut in 2023, which is kind of insane. Um, CPU called him up, which was annoying to me, uh, but I didn't notice it at the time. They just did it, even though everything is manual for me. It's all right, but we have a number of guys that are fighting for playing time. Our bench right now is all lefties. It was brought to my attention. It was a good point, um, but a lot of them are lefties that hit lefties better. I don't really see it as too much of a deal. Yes, I know you guys want to see Alexi Vina. He's not ready yet. I need him to develop that power a little bit more. And we're working on it every day. Hopefully, that's going to be something that develops this year at AAA. He's only 19 years old. So there is hope for him yet. And other than that, not really too much to tell you. I've changed equipment uh, for a lot of these guys. Um, this is what Joaquin Arnold looks like now. And they're not huge, huge changes. Just makes him look a little bit more like a person and not... Carl, uh, or the, the, is his name Carl? The policeman dad from Family Matters? <laughs> policeman, I don't know why I said it like that. But uh, yeah, made him look a little bit more normal. I think he is still going to have the ridiculous uh, rec specs in the field. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a thing. Uh, I mean, he just looks so insane. <laughs> but I think that's kind of funny. So we'll keep it for now. Uh, and Alexi Vina got slight tweaks as well. Nothing too crazy for him, just 
you know, looks more like a modern MLB player. And um, that was kind of the goal for a lot of these guys. So change some things around. We're, we are looking to potentially make a move. There is a bit of a log jam in the infield right now. I'm not going to say there is not. We're going to look to change around the lineup maybe a little bit. One and two start. It is early, but we could change some things. And we could potentially look to get better on defense. You know, I'm looking at our depth chart here. And I'm trying to think about how we want to do this. We essentially have multiple designated hitters with Jonathan India. Jesse Winker, I'm not going to trade. He's really just too good for us. And he's on the final year of his deal. He, but he plays well. So I really don't want to move him. I like him as the everyday DH. Jock Peterson, good DH, but starting him at first. I like the outfield. Yandy Diaz still exists, but there is a bit of a logjam. At some point, somebody's got to go. That is true. So whether it's Jonathan India or Yandy Diaz, whose contract's expiring and he's 33, but he's still really good for us, so it's hard to trade him. Or maybe it's, you know, one of our younger guys. Maybe it is Edwin Arroyo. Or even Noel V. Marte. It'll be interesting. Jock Peterson, I think, is kind of uh, underproduced for us. He's under contract for the next two years, this year or next year. So, he's somebody that could get moved. Was a little bit underwhelming his first year in Cincinnati. And you go from San Francisco with an 829 OPS. You better improve that when you go to Cincinnati, where the ball flies. So, I don't know. Something's going to change. Our defense will definitely get better when Jock Peterson's gone and Jesse Winker is gone and Yandy Diaz is gone. But right now, and even maybe Jonathan India, but right now there's really not a whole lot I'm going to do. And our bench is not really all lefties right now, but it could be if we move out Jesse Winker for Yandy Diaz or move Steer into the starting lineup, which I kind of want to do. But our bench is all lefties against lefties, which I'm fine with because if they start a lefty, I don't really want to play these guys, right? I want to bring them in when they bring in right-handers. Although Jesse Winker, again, does it lefties well. Jason Vosler does it lefties well enough. Braley does not. Hendrick is close. Will Benson doesn't really matter. Although, he's been playing really well in real life of late, so good for him. And also against righties, I'm going to move Ellie De La Cruz into the cleanup spot. Moving him up in the order could be very good for us. We'll move Tyler O'Neill down slightly. I don't know that it stays like this, but it is an option, you know, to get some of our stars some more playing time up the top or future stars in some cases. And then against lefties, I feel pretty good about where it is. Like Yandy Diaz, he can be a platoon guy. We can play like the Rays. And Spencer Steer hits lefties quite well. India maybe can move down. He can be our nine hitter for now, which is pretty good. Jock can slide down against lefties, even though he's not horrific. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And we are already jumping into a moment. Now, we're down 8-4, to four, so that's no good. But Tyler Stevenson's having a huge game against Chris Bassett. 3-for-3, three three, just a triple away from the cycle. Now, he's a catcher. It's going to be basically impossible, honestly, in my opinion. We're going to need to get really lucky. We're going to need a really good bounce. But it's encouraging, at least, that he's off to a phenomenal start. And these type of games will help. So we'll see if we can find something, get on something from Chris Bassett, get it to a gap, or maybe even down the line would be better. Something towards that right side where we could really get out and run. But even for a catcher that runs fairly well, it's going to be basically impossible. I'm going to be honest. And at the same time, we are trying to mount a comeback. Down by four. Lead-off hitter is Tyler Stevenson. We're not going to chase just for the sake of putting something in play to maybe have no chance at a triple. We're going to try to work on as Stevenson rips this one foul. Hopefully, get out of play. Thank you. Challenge pitch. Stevenson, very professional swing. Right back up the middle at 100-plus. And we potentially have a rally here. Lead-off man on. Top of the seventh. Bassett at 100 pitches. He's got to be low on energy. Here's the 0-2 to Jock Peterson. That's never great. Ball hit past the first baseman. Vlad, he stops it at least. Goes to one. 
and Jock Peterson is out. Couldn't quite get past Vlad Jr. He made a really great play. We do have a runner in scoring position, though. For Ellie De La Cruz. Has homered in this game. He is also down 0-2 in the count. Not what you want to see. But he hits it. Stevenson off and running. That's going to get down for a base hit. Ellie reaches. And we'll have runners on the corners with only one out. Meat of our order, Ellie De La Cruz in the cleanup spot comes up clutch. They go to Ricky Tiedemann. He is a lefty. He's one of their top starting pitcher prospects. Hunter Renfro kills lefties, though. And I can't imagine Tiedemann's ratings are too high at this point, as he'll walk Hunter Renfro to load the bases for Jake Fraley. I wish we could say, make a change. But because it's player locked, we cannot pinch hit here. But this would be... A perfect opportunity for a pinch hit. But obviously it doesn't do anything. So it's got to be Jake Fraley, lefty, lefty. Full count. Hit him. Hit him. Popped up. Is that in the infield? It is. If we, if we leave the bases loaded here with no runs, it's going to be a disaster. Our big free agent signing. Joint highest rated player on our team, Tyler O'Neill. Makes contact at least. It is a fly out to right field and we leave the bases loaded in the seventh. That is tough. Didn't do anything in the eighth. Top nine. Toronto got another run. <laughs> this one, probably a loss. We allowed three runs, or excuse me, seven runs in the third inning. Ugh, oh, come on. Ground ball at second. And that's probably the game. Toronto holds us off with a 9-4 win. Griffin Cannon gets the loss. Didn't allow an earned run. But only went 2-2 two and two thirds. Allowed... So many base runners. I'm confused how zero earned runs comes to be from that line. Two and two thirds inning. So he got into the third, allowing seven hits and two walks, but didn't allow a run. An earned run. We did have an error. I guess the error completely crushed us. All right, we got to start winning some games, man. Here we go. And this is why I can't take Jesse Winker out of the lineup. Same situation as Tyler Stevenson. We have another guy that can hit for the cycle. It's the seventh inning again. And this time we're very much in the game. Still behind. Our pitching has been bad, apparently, against Toronto. But Jesse Winker is unbelievable. He doesn't run well. I would take a home run over a triple. Don't care about the cycle. I really don't. Pearson throws hard. I think he has a slider as well. Slider curve, circle change. It's a hanger. Two outs. We're swinging. A walk is cool, but it gets to Jonathan India. We need a hit. We need a homer. Good pitch to hit. Winker out in front, rolls over. This is the end of our top half of the seventh. And we need our pitching to hold strong, give us a chance. They did not allow to run in the seventh. Wouldn't get another chance offensively. Jake Fraley with a homer. Matt McClain goes two for five with a double. Stevenson the same. And Marcus Strobin allows 10 hits. Strikes out one in three and two thirds. Allows six earned runs. That was one of our free agent signings. It's not off to a good start. And that is now four straight losses after an opening day win. And our offense is starting to get it going. Our pitching is not. Zero runs with Hunter Green on the mound, but 10 in game two, seven, nine, and eight. Is this a defensive issue? Because our pitching seems to be good. I know it's early, but this is a bad start. And then our offense died. One run. Eat him in again. Interesting. Uh, this, is, this is a bad start. Finally a win. And we have an opportunity for another Graham Ashcraft who got off to a horrific start, as all of our pitchers really have. We need him to shut it down. A complete game shutout. It is the Royals. 
But at the same time, we got to take any win we can get. This is one of the worst starts to the season you could possibly have. And I'll tell you what's most impressive here about Graham Ascrack is only 76 pitches. It's the ninth inning. He's thrown fewer than 80 pitches to get, what is it? Are we at uh, 25 outs? There's number 26. And if we can sit down in the Franimal, it'll be number 27. There's strike one. We are challenging him. We have a 2-0 lead here. A solo shot doesn't hurt us. Fly ball at O'Neal. Even in Cincinnati, that one's not getting out. O'Neal hauls it in. We've won two in a row for the first time this young season. Needed that badly. Ashcraft only strikes out three, but only allows four base runners through a complete game shutout. Our offense was dead, but Tyler Stevenson, couple of doubles, goes three for four. He's one of the only guys on our team that's worth a damn right now. Let's sweep the Royals, because it is the Royals. Let's get it done. Although, we can start scouting, and we'll try to get another generational player. That's our goal. I think we'll probably start by scouting position, right? But we're going to take a look at, uh, at some of these prospects first. Now, Chris Tr Trevino seems to be a bad scout. I thought my scouts were all really, really good. Bobby Jimenez is good for pitchers. Horton is really good for position players. We had another guy who was really good for position players. This guy's not it. Where did you come from? And something I've learned from all of the generational players I've seen, they're all 18. So not super interested in scouting any of these, like, junior college players. Like, we're going to look at them because you're probably not going to get a generational player in every class. But... If we want to, it's going to be with the guys straight out of high school, like Julio Pinto. Griffin Canning still with zero ERA somehow. Let's see if we can continue. Nope. <laughs> Lose 5 nothing to the Royals. We can't win every game. It's baseball. But man, 3-6 and six to start the year is not what I wanted. And the matchups don't get easier. The Brewers are very, very good in this franchise. Signed Luis Severino, Juan Soto. They've got a very, very good team. And after a win and a couple losses, we are facing Milwaukee and facing Juan Soto. Big signing by the Milwaukee Brewers. They are the team to beat in the NL Central this year. We are looking to do it, but you're going to have to get big outs in situations just like this high scoring game nine to eight bruzdar is our closer although you guys know i love alexis diaz a zero era this year so we're gonna keep trying to get him going but we got to get juan soto out we know he's not gonna chase we know he's gonna be patient but he swings on the first pitch rolls over to jack peterson that is a big out number one Juan Soto back to the dugout. Alex Bregman signed with Milwaukee. I'm telling you, this team is not playing around. The Brewers are in it to win it. We've got to shut him down. And this is another really patient hitter, by the way, historically. Bregman does not chase. See if we can get him here. He thought about it. He flinched. That's got to be two for flinching. That's a strikeout. Come on. Anchor hit back up the middle. Base hit. Brewers have the tying man aboard against Bruce Dark Ratterall. And the thing is, he's not a strikeout artist. He's a pitch-to-contact guy. Luis Orias is a decent player as well. But if you're pitch-to-contact and we don't have the defense behind him, he might not be the guy. So I know this is our closer. I might put Alexis Diaz back in the role. And we might bring him out for this game depending on what happens. We got to get him to chase. No interest. Four-seamer got him looking at 101 on the black on the inside part of the plate. Urias probably thought it was in and high. Sucks to suck. Everyone in this lineup's two for four today. Here's Tyrone Taylor. Kind of forgot he was an MLB player. That's kind of a mistake. Got it right down the middle. I don't locate his cutter that well with pure analog. But I'm not switching to pinpoint. It's just too easy. Chase the slider. Please, somebody. 
It's got to be the worst pitch of all time. I don't know if that we've really seen anyone swing and miss at it. Sinker, down and in, got him swinging. Let's go. Big win. And you know what? Not only is it a big win, 9-8, to eight, big save. We took the lead in the ninth inning. But it's against a division rival and probably the biggest threat to win the division this year. Jock Peterson with a homer, 2 for 5. Tyler Stevenson, 3 for 5 with a home run. Fraley, 2 for 5 with a home run. Renfro with a home run. Did anyone else do anything? Double for India, Peterson, and McLean. Ellie goes 0 for 4 in the cleanup spot. Did walk and is hitting 283. Stevenson at 388. But I'm noticing a glaring hole in that 7 spot right now for us. It's Tyler O'Neill, our huge free agent signing, hitting 071. Not good. At least we won one game off Seattle. This is a huge series. And it's funny, we beat the former Red Luis Castillo, who he traded away in real life to get... I say we, I wasn't a part of that organization at the time. Uh, traded away Luis Castillo, got back Noel V. Marte, Edwin Arroyo, maybe somebody else. Milwaukee also has Brian Bayo. And we rushed him. Six runs in the third inning. Griffin Canning with a phenomenal start. And once again, we're in a situation where you have to shut down Juan Soto in the heart of this Brewers order in order to get a win. And unless disaster strikes, we're going to. We're up eight. Yep. Now, you may remember we traded for Griffin Canning a year ago. He was an angel. We traded Max Kepler to get him. Max Kepler was then put into free agency at the end of the year. We chose not to go after him and look at different options in center field. And that kind of brought us to Tyler O'Neill, who has just not hit at all to start this season. I hate that little shuffle. Strike him out. We're getting him out in any way. Let's get this game over with. Griffin Canning's thrown 92 pitches. Pretty low amount here in the ninth inning, to be fair. As Soto will get a piece of one. O'Neal underneath it in center. Out number one. We had to just challenge these hitters. It's an eight-run lead. I don't care about the complete game shutout. I care about the win. Keeping the pitch count in a fairly reasonable spot would be nice. We're not going to give them free passes. No real chances to come back. You're going to get challenge pitches, and you're either going to hit them or you're going to make outs. All down a Rowdy Telez after William Contreras strikeout. Ground ball at McLean playing shortstop today and usually. And down go the Brewers. We've won our first two against Milwaukee. Maybe we're starting to get it going here. O'Neal with a home run. Jock and Hunter Renfro, a couple of nice games as well. McLean goes two for five with a couple of runs scored. That's a great game. Phenomenal performance all the way around. Eight strikeouts for Canning as well. If we have a four-game sweep over Milwaukee, and they have Shane Bieber as well. Corbin Burns is a Padre now, I believe. But this would be an excellent sweep if we can get this going. And we, we've won three in a row. Stroman getting the win, lowering his ERA. Love that. We have a double and a triple from Fraley. Jonathan India homered. O'Neal 0 for 5, his... His numbers get even worse. I mean, we might have to do something, man. He is absolutely ice cold. We can't see the regression at 29. Come on. I mean, this is just unbelievable how bad he's been. I'm going to move him up in the order slightly. I know that seems weird to move Ellie down and Tyler O'Neill up. Ellie's playing really well for us. Hopefully he starts to get some more boosts here in a minute. This could be his breakout year. He's having a really nice start. Why would I move him down? I want to get Tyler O'Neill going a little bit, man. This is our huge signing. Gave him three years, over 17 mil per year in that stretch. I want to try it out for a week or so, see if we can't get him going. NL Central is a bloodbath right now. Pirates are 11 and 3 to start. What is going on? And it's ace against ace. Shane Bieber against Hunter Green. Can we get the win? Let's go quick counts. Actually, no. Let's go player lock, Tyler O'Neal. Let's get him going. Come on. Trying to complete the four-game sweep over in Milwaukee here at American Family Field. Two 7-8 teams fighting for the NL Central here early. 
Our offense hitting well this series, over 300. Pitching has allowed 11 runs, or 11 earned runs, but probably about 11 runs, which is a little bit higher than I would want, honestly, but not awful. Not awful. And uh, see if Hunter Green, our ace, can shut things down and give us a sweep. Fly ball near O'Neal. He's got tremendous speed, tracking it underneath it. And that is the end of the first inning. Hopefully, we'll see Tyler O'Neill in the bottom, uh, or excuse me, the top of the second inning. We surely should. And we'll see if he can't get a hit. 078 batting average. OPS under 400. Just awful. Jane Bieber's having a great year. ERA under 2. It is early. Hopefully, we can balloon that today. And it all starts with a big swing from O'Neal. Hits it fairly well to left. But should be an easy out for the left fielder. I think that went to the to the track, maybe. Good swing. Just couldn't get what we wanted. Maybe with a runner on, we'll have better luck. What are his numbers with runners on? Probably awful when you're hitting 077 now. But a couple of hits can change that. It is very early. There's a ground ball back up the middle. That one's going to get through. O'Neal runs really well, but he is blocked by 48 speed ahead of him. We're going to be stuck here on first, but a nice hit from O'Neal. Got a pitch to drive. A little bit concerning with a hanging slider that all we can get is a single back up the middle, but it's a hit. And right now, we'll take what we can get. 2-2 two -two to Ellie De La Cruz. Bieber running into a bit of trouble here in the top of the fourth. Two runners on, nobody out. Come on, Ellie. Ground ball, smoke through. And we're going station to station. Ellie coming up big in the sixth spot. Maybe a good hole for him. A good spot in the lineup for him. As he finds a hole. I'll tell you what, I know we moved him down. People are not going to like that. But we also moved him up. He was our seven and eight hitter last year. And tried him out in the four spot. Hit pretty well. Moved him to six. We're just trying to play with things, experiment, and see what happens. Jake Fraley up. Bases juiced. He already has a hit in this game. Having a nice season. He's one of our better bats at the end of the lineup. But is going back to the bench. A huge pack. He swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Not what we wanted. But we do like Jesse Winker. He can cause problems for opposing teams in a hurry. Base is still juiced. Hit it in play, but not a double play, please. That one is ripped to right field. Will be a tough play for the right fielder. It's over his head and over the wall. Grand slam, Jesse Winker, and the big red machine is rolling in Milwaukee. Who but Jesse Winker? He's been unbelievable. Trade Jesse Winker? I don't think so. Big power at the bottom of our order, and he comes up clutch off of Milwaukee's ace. No doubter. Not for me. But when you hit it 107 off the bat, few ballparks can contain that. 4 nothing Reds. And we did a good job in the field as well. Still no runs. And now runners on the corners for Tyler O'Neill with just one out. Bieber's been bounced from the game. It's former Red, Luis Sessa on the mound. And I'll tell you, I'm excited to see him for the first time. <laughs> because I was not excited to see him anytime we had to pitch him on our team. But facing him is a whole different story as he's trying to paint on the outside part of the plate. Runs behind Tyler O'Neill, 2-0. And now 3-0. Not getting anything on the outer half. And uh, we could green light here. But we don't. Ellie De La Cruz on deck. Hitting over 300 right now. Red hot. Locked in at the plate. And that was a pitch to hit. O'Neal deep to right center. Should get the run in. I mean, no real play at the plate. And we'll take it. Not a hit for O'Neal. Again, we could use him right now. But a sack fly doesn't hurt the average. Gets a run in. And it's 9 to nothing. As O'Neal will face a lefty Aaron Ashby here in the sixth. We have blown things wide open. 9 to nothing. O'Neal with a swing and a drive. Deep to center. Not coming back. It's a grand slam for Tyler O'Neal. 
Unbelievable. Did anyone need it more than this guy? Two grand slams in the same game for Cincinnati. Both from our outfielders. If you want to count Jesse Winker in that, maybe a bit of a stretch. Because he's pretty much just a DH. But who needed it more than Tyler O'Neill? Didn't think he got it right away. But you could tell by the time O'Neill arrived at first base, the center fielder was looking at the wall. It was out of here. That is like the most no-doubter home run that nobody had a clue about that I've ever seen. As O'Neill starting to get it going a little bit here. Two for three. We're up 14 to nothing here in player lock. We'll face you El Payamps. See if we can't get another hit for O'Neill. Got to stay back on that. A little bit difficult with these shadows, I will say. This is, I mean, it looks insane. As O'Neill turns on an inside pitch. If it's fair, it's going to be extra bases, and it is. Off the wall. Nice double for Tyler O'Neill, advancing the runner to third, and Milwaukee is getting absolutely smashed. They are down 14, and it's only going to get worse. O'Neill with a breakout game here when our entire offense is unstoppable. It's going to be 15, 16, 17, nothing in a hurry. Top eight, nobody down. Ellie De La Cruz is going to get one in here, I hope. Ground ball at first base. Hit too hard. Nobody can score. What about Jake Fraley, though? Rake Fraley with a homer in this game. He's got a good matchup against Piomps. Ground ball to second base. That'll score a run, though. Fraley does the job, and we are up 15 now. Oh, 3-1 count to Winker. Look out, Milwaukee. You are in trouble. Oh, ball four. Didn't want anything to do with Jesse Winker. As Jonathan India will try to get another hit here. Two for three. Archie Bradley into the game for the Brewers. I mean, it's over. But we're just trying to rub salt in the wound right now. As India will hit a fly ball. Shallow left field. And the inning is over. We'll get one more chance in the ninth, I think, with Tyler O'Neill. The way our lineup's hitting right now. Not guaranteed, but there's a chance for it. And we will. O'Neill, by the way, is a triple away from the cycle. We are up 15. Runners on first and second. And he's got the type of speed where a triple's not out of the question if we can get something to right center. And we got a pitch that we really could have hit to right center. O'Neill, good swing on it. Just not really getting the luckiest right now with some of these swings. Maybe that's why the batting average is so low. Bad BABIP luck. Uh, batting average and balls in play. But, I mean, this was a phenomenal game. He had a grand slam. What more can you ask for as we look to have a, a huge shutout over the Milwaukee Brewers in a four-game sweep? Not over yet, though. But that is the game. Huge win. 15-0. And our ace looked a whole lot better than their ace. Bieber allows five earned runs. Hunter Green, goose egg, zero. 11 strikeouts in six and two thirds, only allowing five hits. Did walk three, but our offense was unstoppable today. Double for India and O'Neill. Home runs for Winker, Fraley, and O'Neill. But it was just a hit parade. Four hits for Hunter Renfro. Which means four runs for Hunter Renfro. Three hits and a walk. Three hits for O'Neill. Tied for the team lead. Two for Ellie, two for Fraley, two for India, two for Stevenson. The only one who went hitless was Spencer Steer. And, I mean, a lot of sack flies? Did he get pulled from the game? There's nobody else in there. Kind of confused. How did Steer only end with two official ABs but no walks? And, and only one sack fly? Some of these sim stats are so confusing to me. You explain that to me, because a plate appearance is when you go up to the plate, and at bat is when you end with a hit or out. So, he didn't have a sack fly. He maybe sack bunted, but three times? I don't know. Very strange to me. This has been a huge stretch for us. That sweep... And some of these in dominant fashion. So big for us. We are 8-8. Eight and eight, And I'm hoping that we can extend this winning streak to five games at the very least. But we are going to be on the road for a few. So it could be tough. I'm expecting a loss at some point. But let's get on a roll. 
as her bias is injured. These guys that get injured for a day, whatever. Um, but we are continuing to win. And the offense got real quiet in this one. 1-1, one, one, ninth inning. TJ Antone against Eugenio Suarez. Shut it down. Advance to extras. Give ourselves a chance. But it's Jackie Robinson day here. Everyone wearing number 42. See the 42 socks. Worn by TJ Antone as well. De La Cruz fields a ground ball from Suarez. Out number one. I like TJ Antone. He's upset me at some times. I don't love the pitch mix of sinker, slider, slurve. Wish he had something else, like a changeup. But he's fairly accurate. And that ball is hit super well to left center. One hop off the wall. Yandy Diaz getting the start in left field today. And I don't know how much I want to see of this. That's a big swing for Mitch there. I can't be afraid to go to the bullpen. We're on a win streak. I want to win. We're going to warm up our two best arms. Double barreled action in the bullpen. Alexis Diaz. Bruised our Gratterall. Edwin Rios 0 for 3. Keston Hero up next. This is, you know, near the bottom of the lineup. We got to get outs. That was a hanger. That was another hanger. Going to bounce in front of O'Neal. They're going to send the runner. Here's the relay throw. Vosler to home. Got him! Hose at the plate. O'Neal with the big arm. Jason Vosler playing. That's a problem. But the ball was just hit too hard to run on. You only have one out in the inning. Why are you running on that? Great relay. Stevenson doing a good job applying the tag. And that was a massive out. Massive out. We walked Keston here to get to Joey Bart. That is a sinker right down the middle. That's a bad spot for it. Got to be a little bit more careful with these locations. As Bart takes a close pitch. One more base runner and Antone's done. One more base runner and the game might be over. A base hit could very easily end the game here. Ground ball down the third base line. That would have been game over. Let's get a strikeout, TJ. Bart staying alive. There was a slur. Let's show him the slider. Very similar pitch, similar action. Ground ball at Steer playing third base today. Throws on to first. Gets the out. We're going to extras. Nearly losing our winning streak in an instant. Great relay save the game. We got to get runs here in extras. Three, four, five in our order. Love starting with Tyler Stevenson. Two for four in this game facing Brad Keller. Stevenson is a phenomenal contact guy. Has been phenomenal with runners in scoring position historically. However, if you just saw on the uh, scoreboard there, only 154 this year. And it's going to drop even lower than that. Base hit. Back up the middle. Hunter Renfro has tied it. Nope, he hasn't. He's given us the lead. It's extras. What am I talking about? Don't worry about it. Up to the next batter. Oh, Tyler O'Neill 0 for 3. What's new? That's a fastball right down the middle. That's got to be in the seats. Do we have any pinch running options? Austin Hendrick or Will Benson? Is it worth it? I'm going to say he's worse defensively. Triples Alley could score him anyway. We're just going to leave Hunter Renfro in. We'll see what happens. I mean, O'Neal could homer or strike out. Wouldn't matter anyway. Fly ball to right. Plenty of hang time. Fastball right down the middle. We got to hit those, Tyler. <laughs> got to hit those. Here's Spencer Steer, though, hitting 313 with more playing time this year. OPS over 800. You have a big opportunity. Hit something to a gap. Right center, preferably. That's hit to a gap. Spencer Steer, base knock. Renfro, 48 speed, chugging around third base. We're going to send him. Get on your horse. No throw. And Spencer Steer has extended our lead to two. That's why you don't pinch around for Hunter Renfro. He's too good. Too fast. Can't catch him. Steer with a huge hit. I mean, listen. One run in extras is one thing. They're going to get the base runner or the, the ghost runner on second base anyway, right? Two runs. Now you got a little bit more breathing room. Here's Jimmy Nelson against Ellie De La Cruz. 0 for 4 in this game. 
Couple of flyouts. Come on, Ellie. Hanger, Ellie scoops it past the third baseman. And that is a base knock for De La Cruz. Actually rip that. 106 off the bat. Too hot to handle for the third baseman. As Ellie reaches. Runners on the corners for Jason Vosler, who we're going to take the bat out of his hand. Jock Peterson against his former team. We signed him from San Francisco. He was an all-star in 2022. He hasn't quite played to that level in a little while. Now, of course, a couple teams later, we need Jock to do something. Or actually, just, just one team later. That's right. We, we brought him from uh, San Francisco where he was an all-star. So he's an all-star here. And uh, next team, haven't had the same player. Didn't get the start to uh, today against the lefty. And uh, he got a hanging slider, timed it up, and squibbed it on the ground. Maybe he's on the bench for a reason. We've seen Bruce Dar. We're going to Alexis Diaz. He's got a zero ERA. This is the Alexis Diaz we wanted. 4.2 innings. He's allowed an average at 143 against right-handers, 111 against lefties. Dial up the heat. Show him the fastball. They were ready for the fastball. All right, we got ambushed. He was way out ahead. No more fastballs. Slider for a strike front door. 0-2 against Taylor Motter. Going back to the slider. He's fighting. Slider on the black. Goodbye. Strikeout looking as Motter goes down. He put together a pretty good AB. Just not enough against Alexis Diaz. Ground ball at Matt McLean, Ranging to his left. Throwing on to first. Out number two. One out away from beating the Giants here on Jackie Robinson Day. Here in 10 innings. As we face Mike Yastrzemski. The tying run at the plate. Don't want to put him on. We're going to go right after him. Yastrzemski down 0 or 1 and 2 in the count. Continues to fight back to back foul balls. I mean, we, we've shown him that fastball up a couple of times now. And that is ball two? The game's over. We won. How is that a ball? Here's a slider for the first time. Where's the zone, man? I know it's under, but how how tight is it? Three and two. Fastball up. Let's get him swinging. Pop up. Steer ranging over. Near the dugout. Reaching. Makes the catch. Game over. Reds win again. All right. Hey, we're playing some pretty good baseball right now. Big extra innings win. We are turning into the team of dreams. The team of destiny. And it all started with Tyler O'Neill gunning down a runner at the plate in the ninth inning. That's huge. Six in a row after a disaster start to the season. We are a couple games above 500 and maybe about to get another sweep. And we're going to go for it with another player lock game. And, you know, I think, oh, and Jock was injured or whatever for that pinch hit. Was he really, though? Can't be that injured. All right, let's dial up the electricity. Ellie De La Cruz, player lock. Hopefully we see Tyler O'Neill on base in front of him a couple times. Otherwise, I'm going to be reevaluating. It is early, but 117 is the lowest average on the team by about 100 points. So, <laughs> be better. Like, look, if, if Noah Syndergaard can have an ERA at .87 through 20-plus innings... You can hit better than 117. Come on. Griffin Canning allowed the opening or leadoff man to reach. Here is one of the top prospects in the Giants system, Marco Luciano. Ground ball at Ellie, trying for the turn. Double play. Let's go. Let's hit. It's only two outs, but that should be all the momentum Griffin Canning needs to get out of this. One more, one more out, and there it is. Ellie De La Cruz gets a chance here. <laughs> Tyler O'Neill made an out in front of him. I guess that's to be expected at this point. That one smoked. Deep to center field. Is this going to get down? It is. Going to one hop off the base of the wall. De La Cruz runs incredibly well. Pushing for three. Triples alley. No problem for electric De La Cruz. Triple in his first AB. 
That's what he can do. Got a pitch to hit. Drove it a deep ways. Didn't really even, you know, nestle it into that triples alley gap. But it didn't really seem to matter. As soon as that hit off the wall, Ellie was thinking one thing, and that's three. And he got it pretty easily. And Jake Fraley, all you gotta do, hit it to the outfield. And he does. Ellie's gonna score easily. Base hit, RBI single for Rake Fraley. He had a one nothing lead. Where was this hit? It was really tough to see. Inside sinker, Fraley jammed on it, but stays on it. Actually, not too bad of a swing. Pokes it the other way past the leaping tribe, the third baseman. As we get to Ellie De La Cruz again. Hardest part of the cycle out of the way. We've seen a couple guys be just short of the cycle in this video. Is her missing that pesky triple? Ellie might have another one! Stay fair, and it got down the line! It's a double for Ellie De La Cruz, and we are on cycle watch. Without question. A triple and a double here in just two ABs in the fourth inning. Ellie, I mean, similar swing to what happened with Jake Fraley. It just stays fair. Obviously, a little bit more power on that. We got well over the third baseman's head. But, you know, fair by maybe five or six baseball lengths there. No problem for Ellie De La Cruz to get into second base. Ground ball at Ellie. Look how good I am in the field. No problem. <laughs> I've been practicing my player lock. No, I haven't been. Uh, but, yeah, the, the problem that you see here is that it's the top of the seventh inning. The offense really hasn't been doing much in this game. So this is only AB number three for Ellie after a couple of extra base hits. And uh, that's not going to be a home run pitch. Hanger, Ellie back up the middle. And he's just a home run shy of the cycle. We keep hyping it up. He might not even get another AB, which that sucks. 3-0 to Jake Fraley. Does he get the green light? Where is this ball four? It is ball four. Ellie back to second base for Jock Peterson, lefty lefty. All right, Jock, no double play, please. We might get another AB with Ellie. Strikes out. Um, that's all right, I guess. That's okay. Jonathan India 0 for 5 in this short series. Searching for a hit here. 2-2 two, two to him. Got a lefty on the mound. I think he does have pretty even splits. And he's going to hit this one to shallow left. Left fielder coming on. That ends the top half of the seventh inning. And Ellie will get another AB. Bases loaded. Seth Corey still in the game for San Francisco. We're going to power swing with Ellie if we get a pitch to hit. Need that home run. Come on, Ellie. Could he hit for the cycle? He's done it in real life already. Did it, I think, in game number 15? <laughs> I don't think he's done it in MLB The Show Land as he enters year two. And that was the pitch. That was the pitch. Oh, it was a hanger. Too late on it. Just late. That's a pitch to hit. It's a two-seamer, and we're early on that. Oh, my goodness. One-two. Do we still power swing with Ellie? I want that home run. 2-2. Two, two. We're fighting back. Give Ellie a pitch to hit. We've had a couple. The curveball was the one we could have taken deep, I think. The fastball would have been tough. And that's... That's gassed. Up and in, power swung, Ellie goes down swinging. And that is the ball game. Ellie, of course, is your player of the game. Don't care about Griffin Canning. Great start for him, to be fair. Only seven base runners allowed in seven innings. Eight strikeouts. But Ellie went three for four with a triple. A double. All right, I'll give it to you. We have won seven in a row. And we're going back home to Cincinnati. Now, the Reds went on an amazing winning streak in real life in 2023, 10-plus. And we equal that. It's improved to eight. Stroman with the win over Paul Blackburn. 2 nothing, And now our ace, Hunter Green, against Braxton Garrett. ERA under one. And it's another win for the Reds. ERA shoots up a bit, but still a great game. We win 7-2. to two. Matt McClain with a double. Yandy Diaz had a pair, Hunter Renfro with a home run, and Tyler O'Neill has improved his average to 134. Jason Vosler playing third base makes me want to um, stop him being on the team, to be honest. 
Oh, and the CPU is taking control of my lineup. I guess Spencer Steer plays first base now. What, what are we doing? To be fair, Jesse Winker is cold. So maybe he shouldn't be the DH. So Steer works, but he's not really that good against righties. I have no choice but to move Tyler O'Neill down for the time being. It's not playing well enough. I'm gonna move Ellie up to that two spot, Matt McClain to five against lefties. Maybe even Spencer Steer and then McClain, O'Neill, India Peterson. Peterson, I don't I don't know what to do with Jock, to be honest. He's regressing. Yandy Diaz is regressing, but continuing to rake, so it's really tough to sit him on the bench. We don't play him against righties, but he could do it. Down to the minors real quick. Alexi Vina is having an okay season. Power developing a bit more. Four home runs already. Way better than he did last year. Noel B. Marte is destroying AAA. Christian Encarnacion Strand hitting very well. Collier bit to a slow start. Arroyo as well. George Valera is crushing it. Okay. Ryan McKenna crushing it at AAA. He could get the call up for some defense in the outfield. That's a possibility. And then, of course, everyone wants to know, how is Joaquin Arnold doing? Unbelievably well. Hitting 419 in AAA, three homers in 43 at-bats. What is he slugging? 744, three doubles, a triple, and three home runs in 10 games? Oh, my God. Joaquin Arnold might be a joke. Ooh, reaction up plus one. Let's go. We could keep Joaquin Arnold on fielding drills. The bat's already so good. All right. I can't end the episode until we lose. As Joe Boyle gets injured. Put him on the 15 day. And we are trying to make the comeback. Down 11 to 7. McLean just a double away from the cycle. This is much easier to get. Matthew Nelson playing today. I guess no Tyler Stevenson probably part of why we're losing. Although, pitching has got to be it. We allowed five runs in the third inning after we scored four in the first. McLean with a homer, a triple, and a single. And unfortunately, an out. will make it a lot harder to get this double. Fewer opportunities. Maybe one. Maybe two more in this game. We know one for sure, but maybe two. We need a rally. Rain's coming down. It's bottom eight as he faces Harleen the Marlene, former Marlin and Giant. Arlene Garcia, maybe elsewhere. I don't really know where he is now. I couldn't tell you. I would guess, I would guess Giants, but I have no idea. Anyway, doesn't matter. Going for a double. Matt McClain, that's not how we're going to get it done. 0-2. Good timing, but not a good pitch to hit. Ah, he's on the Pirates, but 60-day IL, so he has not pitched for the Pirates yet. Uh, was Giants last year, though. So, not all bad. But he's found his way on the rival Cardinals. And he's found Matt McLean, 0-2 in the count. Professional take for Matt McLean. That's why they're going to pay him the big bucks. They being me, but we have a lot of time before we have to do that. Little ground ball. Going to be tough to turn two. They get one. Back on a first. Not in time. McLean legs it out. It's not going to be the double we needed for the cycle, but it's not a double play. And Jonathan India is hot. Three for four. They're going to bring out Dakota Hudson to face him. India, please. Get a hit. Another squibber in front of the plate. Play it first. Got him. Oh, that's going to be the game. That was our chance. Top nine. Not even looking good here, man. We got to turn a double play or something. We got our sinker baller in. They're going to look to steal. Here's a throw. Gunned. Later, Lars Newtbar sent back to the dugout. I don't hate the steal call there, but it doesn't end up mattering. They win anyway. 11 to 7. Matt McLean with a heck of a game. Ellie with a homer. But our pitching just was not good today. And it's the usual suspects. Nick Lodolo absolutely sucks for us. And I think that'll do it for this episode as our win streak comes to an end. But really nice. A week plus of just straight wins. Can't complain about that. We are 13 and 9. Hey, we're, we're no pirates, but we are 9 and 1 in our last 10. So we'll take it. Alexis Diaz has yet to allow a run in six and two-thirds innings. Enrique Magana. We'll go over prospects, I think, in the next episode. It's still early. Stevenson hitting 333 with four home runs. Matthew Nelson actually not bad as the backup catcher. 286. We'll take that. Jock, 250 with three home runs. 
Cam Collier not exactly fighting for a call-up, but Vosler's been completely terrible. So, could happen sooner rather than later. He's only 20 years old, and I don't know what my plans with him are. Jonathan India hitting 288. Going to be tough to trade that at the back of the order, I'm going to be honest with you. He's been very good in that role for us up to this point. Ellie De La Cruz starting to be that guy. 297 average, three home runs, only a couple of steals, discipline and clutch going up. We'll take that, but we need we need him to just continue to do what he does best, and that's do awesome shit. Homers, use that speed. Two steals, five caught stealing, though, is not cool. I don't know if he's been caught stealing in real life yet. Yandy Diaz is raking. Might start playing him against righties again. We might look to make a trade. McLean, 261, starting to hit a little bit more. Spencer Steer's been crushing it, but only 43 ABs, 326 average. Jake Fraley, having another really nice bounce back season for us. Was sick in 2023, not so great last year, and is now having a career year. Of course, very small sample size. It's been two weeks of the season. Winker hasn't found it yet. Tyler O'Neill certainly has not found it yet. That's a really big problem in my opinion, but it's early, but he is regressing. And then Hunter Renfro, uh, also regressing, not really doing a whole lot right now. OPS has dropped by 100 points. Got to figure that out, uh, which could be Alexi Vina time before long. I don't know, but that'll do it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.